let's have a look at this question here we are given four alkenes and we have to arrange them in the increasing order of heat evolved when one mole of each of them is hydrogenated right so we know that the heat of hydrogenation is inversely proportional to the stability of the alkene right more stable the alkene less heat will be evolved and so what do we have to do we just have to find out the stability order and the opposite order of that will be the order of heat evolved right okay so how do we find which alkene is more stable well the alkene with more number of alpha hydrogens will be more stable so let's find out the number of alpha hydrogens for all of these four alkenes so if we count this as one unit so this alkene has only one alpha carbon and this alpha carbon has methyl groups attached to it so this actually this alkene the first alkene has zero alpha hydrogens right let's ha let's have a look at the second alkene so in the second alkene if this is the one unit we have two alpha carbons which have a total of six alpha hydrogens attached to them okay let's have a look of th look at third alkene so here also we have two alpha carbons and which have total of six alpha hydrogens are attached to them okay so the second and third are what they are geometrical isomers right since both groups are on the same side this is what this is cis alkene and here the opposite group same group are on the opposite side right so this is trans alkene and we know that trans alkenes are more stable than cis alkenes why because the similar groups are on the opposite side right so there's less crowding that is happening less steric crowding so trans alkene will be more stable than cis alkene okay what about option four alkene and option four well we have one alpha carbon two car alpha carbon three alpha carbon however there are only three alpha hydrogens attached to one of the carbon atoms one of the alpha carbon atoms other two alpha carbon atoms have only methyl groups attached to them okay so now looking at this we know that the most stable alkene is second followed by third followed by fourth and followed by first but this is the this is the order of the stability of the alkenes right so the heat of hydrogenation will actually be opposite so the maximum heat will be evolved in alkene 1 followed by alkene 4 followed by alkene 3 and then alkene 2 right so the alkene 2 which is most stable will give out the least heat when it is being hydrogenated okay so let's see which option does it match two three four one two three four one well it matches our option c which is the correct option let's have a look at this question so here we are given an unsymmetrical alkene and we are adding hbr in the presence of peroxide which is hydrogen peroxide in this case and we have to find what would be the y what would be the product and we have been given four options for this okay so first see let's let us see what happens in this reaction so what do we have we have ch3 ch2 ch double bond ch2 and we are adding hbr in the presence of h2o2 right so what happens if h2o2 was not there right so what happens is the negative part of the addendum it gets added to the doubly bonded carbon atom which has less number of hydrogen atoms attached to it right and the product that we get is what ch3 ch2 chcl ch3 and this is called the markovnikov's product right and this is this would have been the product if there would have been no h2o2 however however we do have hydrogen peroxide present so in the presence of hydrogen peroxide the negative part of the addendum it gets added to the carbon to the doubly bonded carbon atom which has more number of hydrogen atoms attached to it so what would be the product it will be ch3 ch2 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 br right so this is one bromo butane in the presence of H h2o2 the negative the the negative part of the addendum it gets added to the doubly bonded carbon atom which has more number of hydrogen atoms attached to it 
and this product is called anti markovnikov's product and this effect is known as peroxide effect right so let's see which option does it match br because hbr is being added so the negative the negative part of the addendum is br okay so option a well option a is not correct what about option b option b is also not correct option c is not correct well the correct option is option d which is what which is one bromo butane let's have a look at this question so here we have an alkyne and we are adding h2 pd in the presence of cso3 or baso4 in the first step and then we are adding br2 in the presence of ccl4 which is carbon tetrachloride in the second step and we get x as the product after these two reactions and we have to find out what this x is and for that we have been given four options okay so let's see what happens in the first step or the first reaction that we have okay so we have here ch3 c triple bond c ch3 and we are adding h2 in the presence of palladium pd caco3 or baso4 right what reaction is this this is the partial reduction right partial hydrogenation of alkyne because this is which catalyst this is the lindlas catalyst the poisoned catalyst that's why only the alkyne is reduced only to alkene and it does not get reduced to alkane right and since hydrogen is being added this uh, the addition of hydrogen is syn addition right both of the hydrogen atoms are getting added from the same side hence we get what we get a cis alkene in this reaction right so let's see what our product would be ch3 c double bond c ch3 we'll have h here we'll also have h here let me write it a bit to the left so it's clear to you so it will be ch3 c double bond c ch3 h and h right so we get a cis alkene right because the addition of hydrogen is what syn addition right so this was the first reaction that was happening in the second reaction we are adding br2 bromine in the presence of what ccl4 br2 in the presence of ccl4 what is ccl4 carbon tetrachloride so what happens in this reaction both of the bromine atoms get added to the double bond right and we get a vicinal dihalide let's see what the product would be c single bond c right we'll have ch3 h br here also we'll have br ch3 and h right so this is what this is vicinal dihalide why because the two halogen atoms or two bromine atoms are on the carbon atoms which are adjacent to each other right so let's see let's see which option does it match so this is this actually is our x right this is the product after the two reactions that were given to us so what is this this is uh one two di no 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 wait 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 this will be one this will be carbon one two three and four right so this is two three di bromo butane right that's what it is let's see which option does it match so first option is two three di bromo butane which is what we found out our x is right so the correct option to this question is option a let's have a look at this question so here we are asked that in huckel's rule which is one of the criteria for a compound to be aromatic the huckel rule is what that it should have so the aromatic compound should have 4n plus 2 pi electrons right so we are asked what does n denote here well let's have a look at all the criteria of aromatic compound so for a compound to be aromatic it has to be cyclic right it has to be planar and it has to follow huckel rule now what is huckel rule well if we have pi electrons which are being delocalized in a compound then the number of those pi electrons should follow this equation which is 
4n plus 2 pi, right? So the number of electrons that are being delocalized in an, in an aromatic compound should be equal to 4n plus 2 pi electrons, where n is what? Where n can be 0, it can be 1, it can be 2, and so on, right? So let's see an example. Well, this is an example of an aromatic compound where n is equal to 0. Let's see how. So if we have n is equal to 0, so this comes out to be what? This comes out to be 2 pi electrons, which is correct. We have one double bond, which involves what? It involves 2 pi electrons or 2 electrons, right? Because it's forming the pi bond using those 2 electrons. Okay, so what, what about n is equal to 1? Well, we have our favorite compound, which is what? Benzene, right? So here, how many electrons do we have? We have 6 pi electrons being delocalized in the compound. How 6? Well, there are 3 pi bonds, right? 3 pi bonds would have total of 6 pi electrons. Okay, and does this fit our equation, which is 4n plus 2 pi? Let's see, which is 4n plus 2. <laughs> pi is the pi electrons we are talking about here. Okay, so if we put 4 into 1, plus 2, 4 plus 2 is what? It comes out to be 6. Yes, it does fit, right? So for a compound, and similarly, there are other examples for n is equal to 2, n is equal to, is equal to 3 as well, right? So for a compound to be aromatic, it has to follow one of the criteria, which is what? Huckel rule, which says what? Which says that the number of pi electrons that are delocalized in the compound should be 4n plus 2, where n denotes what? Where n can be 0, 1, or 2, or 3, or so on, right? So let's have a look at the options. So the first number says that n is number of carbon atoms. Absolutely not, okay? What about B? It says number of rings. This is also not correct. C, it says it n denotes whole number. Well, yes, 0, 1, 2, 3, these are what? These are whole numbers. Correct? So yes, option C is correct. What about option D? It says it can be fractional number or integer or zero. Well, no. The n value, value of n cannot be fractional. It cannot be integer. Right? So option D is also not correct. So the correct option to this question is option C. Let's have a look at this question. So here we are asked to find out the ratio of rates of diffusion, that is Ra by Rb for gases A and B at a given temperature, right? We know that according to Graham's law, the rate of diffusion of a gas is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas and inversely proportional to the square root of the molar mass of the gas, right? So what do we have to find? We have to find the value of Ra by Rb, okay? So Ra by Rb, would that be equal to? Well, that will be equal to the under root, under root of square root, sorry, the square root of molar mass of B divided by molar mass of A, right? Why? Because it is inversely proportional to the square root of the molar masses. Multiply by what? PA by PB, where PA is what? Pressure of gas A and PB is pressure of gas B, right? So if we want to find out the value of Ra by Rb, well, we have actually found it out. It's just the expression that we wanted, right? Because it's inversely, uh, directly proportional to the pressure of the gas and inversely proportional to the molar mass of the gas. Okay, let's see which option does it match here. First one says Pa by Pb into Ma by Mb under root, which is wrong, right? Why? Because we need Mb by Ma. The Mb, that is the molar mass of gas B, should be in the numerator. So option B, option A is not correct. What about option B? Well, option B is also not correct, right? Because the under root should be on molar mass, right? The 1 by 2 should be on molar mass and it should be MB by MA, okay? What about option C? Well, PA by PB, which is correct, MB by MA and the square root is on the molar mass bracket, right? So yes, option C is correct. What about option D? Option D is not correct. Why? Because here the square root is given over the past, over the pressures of the gases, right? Which is wrong. So the correct option to this question is option C.